so hello everyone and welcome to yet another PTC Talks webinar where we are honored today by having Kalmar Kerenstensky, I don't know if I said it right, that right, manager of uh, control sys control engineering for a session on practical implementation of fully digital ALM solution in GAMP compliant pharma, uh, pharma life cycle management. But first, a very quick introduction about myself. My name is Carl Johnson and I'm a customer success manager for PTC in the Nordics. And we're running this webinar at the same time every week uh, where we invite customers and partners for some inspiration on digital transformation to see what is possible and how to make things happen. And all the past webinars have been recorded and are now to be found on the reg registration site. The agenda for today is first a quick overview of PTC and then Kalman will uh, start by introducing himself, touch base on a few challenges, how to address this <coughs> and then explain some of the business outcomes. At the end, we are also having a Q&A session, so uh, keep uh, your questions uh, to the end. Um, now, if we can change the slide, please. Thank you very much. So PTC is an international software company with headquarters based in Boston. We are uh, developing software mainly for manufacturing companies since 1985. We offer tools for the digital transformation, such as CAD for design, PLM for managing data, IoT to connect products or manufacturing operations, and augmented reality to visualize and interact with the digital thread. To you, Kaman. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Kalman Kerestesi. I am from Hungary, from Budapest. And thank you for the opportunity on PTC Talks to be able to introduce this presentation. Uh, the presentation is about uh, practical implementation of a digital ALM solution in the pharma, manage pharma uh, industry, <clears throat> as Carl told you. Uh, I will give you a short introduction of uh, our company and maybe myself and give some background why this area is important and why is a good area for, <laughs> for digital lifecycle management. And also we will try to highlight uh, the challenges of a digital lifecycle management solution and how do we use uh, finally CodeBeamer. Uh, product, a box product to uh, implement the uh, features needed on this area. And finally, I try to give uh, over some information on my personal experiences, what we made with, uh, within our company. So about contrasts, uh, I'm uh, the manager and part owner of this company. Contrasys is active uh, uh, from 1999. Uh, on this area, it's a Budapest uh, Hungary based office. And uh, let's say our mission is industrial dig digitalization. Uh, I will give you some more details on that. What does it mean? Uh, first of all, we are distributing uh, products of some selected customers, uh, selected vendors uh, on this area. Uh, worldwide vendors, let's say, it's mostly software products some minorities, hardware and interfaces. Uh, we have a strong uh, system integrator partner network in Hungary who are geographically distributed and based on their experiences are have uh, practical uh, knowledge on different industries. So uh, we give uh, also to, uh, both to the system integrators and also to the end users, technical support and training on the products we are uh, giving them. And uh, a part of the company is an application engineering team who are implementing applications. And we are using the same box products what we are selling to our customers. This way, we have a good experience uh, on, on nearly all of the products what we are selling. We have some competences on different areas. This is like uh, industrial process control. First, we started with DCS-based applications. Uh, not only in Hungary, but uh, also uh, in Germany, Czech Republic, Slovakia. And we have experience in different industries, uh, or petrochemical, water, uh, wastewater. And, but lately, we uh, uh, 
uh, are very active in the last two decades in pharmaceutical. Uh, it, it, this will, uh, the same area uh, we are operating uh, is, or we are making applications, uh, have also process monitoring via SCADA and demanding uh, batch applications or recipe management <clears throat> on biotechnology and pharma projects. Uh, in the recent times, we have uh, started to go beyond uh, to the classical OT technologies, and we are very active nowadays in industrial insights reporting. Also, I have experience with manufacturing execution systems and implementation, both the qualification system and the actual implementation, the technical side. And we are moving towards the uh, AI and BI solutions where the uh, areas can be uh, the like uh, advanced analytics and asset performance management. Okay, uh, being uh, active in the pharma area, we cannot uh, be cannot survive without a good quality system. So inside the company, both the uh, commercial part and the application development part is covered by uh, ISO uh, quality system. But uh, as I said. Uh, originating from the pharmaceutical applications where nearly 50% of the uh, work or the actual engineering work is uh, extended with another 50% of validation activities. Uh, we learned uh, a, a lot of validation aspects and qualification aspects of those projects. So uh, based on our background, technical background, we are focusing on computer system validation. So not all kinds of validations. Uh, we do, uh, so we don't make the biotechnical equipment or something like that. We are focusing on the computer system validation. Based on that, uh, it became more and more important, the life cycle management. And from 2016, we are using Code Beamer for this uh, purpose. So let me uh, talk about the regulatory background. I don't know uh, your, your background, I, I mean, so maybe it's good to give some ideas. So this is a very highly regulated industry. There are national, international regulations uh, active and the regulatory organizations issue uh, tons of regulatory documents and they renew it, they modernize them. So these organizations are the FDA, the WHO, uh, and there are EU-based regulatory uh, organizations also. And um, uh, there is the ISPE, for instance, uh, which issued, issues the good automation manufacturing practices. And the others are very important in the pharma area is GXP's uh, good manufacturing practices, good laboratory practices. So the X stands for different areas which are important in the production process. And also the customers themselves and users have their internal SOPs. So let's take the GAMP as the good automation manufacturing practice, which is the de facto standard for the computer software validation. So uh, first of all, it has a, a very strong life, life cycle approach within the quality management system. And the target is to achieve uh, full compliance uh, with uh, GXP uh, regulations. So all uh, pharmaceutical uh, developments which are based on computer systems should follow this guideline. The overall concept of the, of the system of the GAMP regulation, GAMP guidelines are the, uh, let's say quality by design. So from the very beginning, the design documents, the requirements shall be qualified and the whole uh, development work and the operations uh, actually using the systems shall be uh, done by qualified people, by qualified equipment and qualified applications. That can be, uh, can result the hope that we will in the end fi uh, find a, uh, a system which fits to the uh, regulations and fits, fits to the intended uh, use. So uh, computer system validation uh, starts with a concept phase where you have to uh, define your, your system and there is a, a relatively short uh, phase, the project phase, while the system is 
uh, erected, uh, assembled, uh, equipped with uh, softwares, equipped with hardwares, and it's also verified. And in the end, it's handed over to the user for a very long, let's say, 15, 10 to 15 years uh, operations. During the operation cycle, the, the end user can make changes of course, technical changes, extensions to the system, which should be similarly uh, handled like the uh, systems in the project phase. So first of all, they have to make a, an assessment uh, whether they, uh, what parts of the system are uh, GMP or G GXP uh, uh, importance, and then those parts has to be validated uh, on the described manner. Also, the retirement of those systems are regulated. So imagine a historian system with uh, 20 years of information. Uh, you cannot just throw it away. You have to make sure that the information is available even after you uh, don't use the uh, original hardware anymore, but the database has to be exported and be available for uh, later observation. So within the GUMP, there are a couple of uh, Paragraphs. I just uh, throw them and listed them on, on this display uh, from the planning of the validation up to the uh, retirement of the system. You have to make a lot of activities and the, the uh, part of that is done by suppliers in the project phase. Part of that are made by system integrators and part of that like initial risk assessment or supplier assessment is done by the end user. So it's it needs a high level of collaboration between the participants. So whenever you plan uh, to make a system like that, uh, you have to count on it uh, with uh, a group of people who are involved, not only the end user, but also the suppliers. So how the uh, pharmaceutical uh, companies uh, are using their quality systems today, uh, we first focus on that and then we try to uh, highlight what can be improved on that by digital uh, uh, application lifecycle management. So right, uh, the, the companies, of course, should meet the compliance. That's a very serious and strict uh, requirement. And usually there is a QA department, which is responsible for that. Uh, they uh, are responsible to prepare, store, and maintain all the uh, documents and reports, which which proves the compliance of the created systems. So this uh, content shall be available for uh, inspection, which can be uh, a planned expect, exception, uh, sorry, uh, inspection or random time, uh, at random time by the authority. So uh, how, how does it look like? The, uh, there are requirements at the beginning, uh, of the user, and there are functional uh, specifications of the equipment uh, manufacturers, how to use their equipment. The, the, the integrator company makes a design, uh, software, hardware design to cover all this, uh, be able to cover all these requirements. And in the most uh, demanding uh, case, uh, uh, the, the system integrator or the supplier uh, defines modules. All these specifications has to be verified and proved while intensive testing activities. And um, that's uh, how the, the de development phase looks like. And this development is not only done uh, for the project phase, but also it uh, have to be repeated every time you uh, use your system and make some changes to your system, of course, in a smaller scale. So nowadays, uh, most of the systems are documented and reported uh, on two uh, ways, uh, either on paper-based or mostly today already uh, document-based uh, and electronic documents, which are stored in electronic document stores. Of course, uh, both are document-based and maybe a mixture also uh, can exist, coexist at the same time company. So now we can see how could we do it on a on another way with a digital lifecycle management system. Because, uh, uh, okay, the, the documents uh, which are stored by the companies, uh, of course, uh, ensures the full compliance and all these uh, processes are 
fully verified and validated. That's not a problem. The problem is uh, that how to satisfy uh, inspections. Uh, usually the case is that uh, it takes for days. The, the end user company is preparing for themselves uh, for at least uh, uh, a week by collecting the documents and to find, try to find all the required uh, uh, reports and documents for this. So it's very difficult. It's a difficult activity, let's say. And document, they, they also employ document manage, managers to, to satisfy these rules, who keep uh, track of documents and make directories, electronic directories, okay, and versions of documents and so on. So in, a, in case of digital LM, uh, lifecycle management, uh, we can reduce the validation risks and costs, of course, because we are we, we get a, in a system where data integrity and security is uh, is done is already a given uh, attribute. Uh, we don't have to uh, separately collect physical documents and physical uh, paper-based documents. Maybe uh, uh, digital ALM. Uh, can support multiple methodologies, not only the waterfall, what I've seen, uh, what you have seen before uh, on, on, on the graphics, uh, how we develop the, the different specifications from requirements and how we execute the tests. So there can be an, a more agile or even a hybrid solution. <clears throat> uh, also, the, the, the main uh, advantage using uh, a digital ALM can be uh, to streamline the validation process itself. So to make it with lower cost, with less people, and with much higher efficiency and precision. So usually for this, uh, we can use a, use a digital uh, uh, platform, uh, possibly a box product. Uh, from one point of view, uh, it's a software category, which only has to be configured and the validation of that software is easier than a, a custom designed and custom developed software, which can be found also in house in a, at a lot of companies where there is a strong IT and they develop a, a, a quality management system for themselves. So anyway, a box product which uh, is uh, which has different versions and the developer is. Uh, developing that independently from us and year by year giving out a new version with new features is a much better solution. Uh, we also expect from a digital lifecycle management system the transparency for the complete lifecycle, traceability and uh, audit trails uh, based on users, based on artifacts, the full history, what we did and what anyone did within the system. And it's also good if it's customizable. So via configuration, the end user can uh, set uh, such a system which is which best fits to its needs. And it is also good if uh, it integrates all kind of activities. So how could Beamer fulfills these requirements? Uh, actually, it's a product uh, existing for more than two decades now. Uh, it's existing. It's a uh, diff full of continuously developed and all the features what uh, in this area uh, we require are included within CodeBeamer. So there is a requirement management part, a software development part, Q&A and testing part, and also during operations we can, uh, risk management, sorry, and during the operation we can also uh, manage the system. So it's a holistically integrated collaborative platform. Uh, which can sorry, uh, fit to the whole life cycle of uh, the target uh, computer system validation projects. Uh, how do you use Code Beamer? Uh, simply you uh, buy it, you install it uh, on your on premise, on your site, either in Linux or, or Docker or Windows platform, or you uh, take advantage of the software as a service. Uh, provided by the developer. Uh, you can add uh, the, the licenses you selected, we will talk about later. Um, of course, being a software uh, 
running on a computer, this uh, from pharma point of view, it's a GMP point of view, it also has to be validated. Uh, we have developed years ago uh, a template which makes uh, for customers easy the, the validation process. And also you can uh, have a, a template which fits to the GUMP uh, guidelines and using the template you can much more easily start your work. We also developed the, a template for that so it's also available. And you simply nominate your system administrator, project administrators, and if you want, you can customize the project configuration or use it as it is. Uh, because of this, uh, from one day to a couple of months, uh, the customization can take place and where you can set different roles, permissions, uh, data model, you can set up one or more projects, you can uh, configure and change, customize the workflows and how the system notifies users. So practically, it's a fully customizable package. While the template, it still offers you uh, a ready environment to start with. You simply connect your uh, company users to the system and assign your project members and that's it. So you can go live and can use to, uh, uh, can uh, start to use the system. Uh, as I said, you can make uh, specifications, uh, design plans, you can review them, you can approve by electronic signatures, you can run tests, uh, also the test reports. You can record evidences on those tests and you can trace all of this against each other. So CodeBeamer, the most important thing is compared to a document-based system, it's item-based. That means each uh, individual requirement uh, is part of the system as an individual uh, item. And those items go through different workflows, which are fully configurable in the system. I, took here uh, some examples like a user requirement specification item can be created on the system, can be reviewed and then approved for later use. And based on this, uh, others uh, like the system integrator can support such a design specification and that can have a different workflow. But again, this can be any, it can have any complexity what you uh, already has in your qualification work engineering and qualification work. Uh, one more thing that the based on these workflows, you combine the engineering work and the qualification work into a single process. Uh, well, this is one of the advantages of this using this package. So you can manage within the pharma uh, business many areas uh, which are listed here. So simple computer systems, MES systems, limbs change, uh, and also corrective and preventive actions at the same time on the same server. <clears throat> uh, what's more, of course, everyone, each company now has class, some, some, something like a classic document-based system. It can be transformed project by project uh, in case of an extension, for instance, to digital artifacts. So you can manage a hybrid model, CodeBeamer and the classic system together. Okay, you can also integrate CodeBeamer with other digital systems. So the advantages, the main values, it's a single source of truth. Any information what you entered, uh, it's only, you, you can find only, um, everyone finds the same information in the same version. So, uh, and all, in, all, this, all this is integrated into a single platform. So time is running, that's why I try to be short now. Uh, the, the key advantage and key value, again, that every item is independently handled and traceable. And this makes sure that you're referencing between, uh, let's say, uh, user requirement item, uh, belonging functional requirements or functional specification items, software design items, and the, the test planning and the test reports are quite straightforward. And for each version you develop, is uh, unique and can be found within the system via traceability. So our experiences uh, based on these uh, features uh, in the last, let's say, seven years using the system in different grade of uh, farmer projects. So the acceptance of the system within the engineering teams because they work parallel in the, let's say, 
SCADA system or the process control system and in, in the uh, in, in code beamer, it's much better the acceptance than if they have to separately create a documentation in office. On the other hand, it's a collaborative work. So uh, the, the uh, information what they enter is right away transparent and visible for, for anyone within the system. The traceability of the uh, given uh, uh, content is very good, it's very powerful and very easy. <clears throat> the review processes are much more efficient, not serialized like with uh, sending office documents in within a week to different people. <clears throat> uh, for the users and administrators, uh, it's uh, practically easy to learn and the adaptions of the regulations uh, are very good with the client practices. So the system is customizable, as I said. Okay, there are no deviations. Everyone should follow the uh, predefined workflows based on their roles. Uh, the suggestions, uh, if you intend to use CodeBeamer, start in small in a way, try to have a sponsor, try to have a small group of people uh, who fulfill the most important roles like uh, you need a QA, uh, subject matter expert, and uh, possibly a technical owner, and then uh, you can start to work. Uh, you can educate uh, the, the internal people or hire uh, people from outside to, to uh, prepare the configuration for you. Um, uh, this way you can continuously improve, uh, identify and improve the best practices, so the quality of your system. Um, later on, of course, you can extend your the, the uh, coverage to multiple areas uh, and systems to cover because you will learn that it's very efficient. So it, it will not be a question after you start to use it. Okay, so that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. The a first lot. time. Yeah, thank you a lot, Kalman, for a very interesting presentation. Uh, so now over to the audience with a question and answer. Uh, if someone wants to start with the first question, please raise your hand or type it in the chat. If no question, I will start with the first question. Um, is there any relevance to introduce CodeBeamer for organizations having already an operation document based uh, QMS system? Yeah, uh, most of the uh, pharmaceutical companies have Okay, any, any of them, all of them has already an operational Q&A uh, quality management system to question how is it operated. So even if you, they have a digital one, still CodeBeamer has uh, the room to, to, to work with because uh, the quality management systems are not designed to, uh, to handle engineering work and to combine the engineering work and the qualification work. So that's this one of the very big strengths of CodeBeamer that it combines uh, the two uh, areas and the same people who are working on uh, on the technical uh, issues can also uh, design the the tests and they can also run qualification tests. So you you combine the two things together and the quality management systems usually doesn't do that. They usually store the as built documents and versions of them, but um, to, to manage the different versions between different items existing in different documents, once if you think on that, it, it's a very difficult thing. So it's a fully digital system uh, based on the relational database can do it, otherwise it's very difficult okay. to maintain. For the answer, thank you. And we'll take a, a one more question. Uh, from the audience here, does it support interface management, for example, integration with uh, external modules, or is uh, is interface definition done with PTC windshield modeler? Uh, it it has built in API, so based on that, <clears throat> uh, it can access practically any kind of system. It's a web service, so uh, we ourselves uh, have created projects where we interface the system with different other ones, uh, but uh, being the uh, both products, uh, I mean Winchill and also CodeBeamer, a PTC in the PTC uh, portfolio, I'm quite sure that uh, sooner or later 
to all PTC, other softwares, a code beamer will have, or most to most of them where it makes sense, will have a built-in interface. Okay, thank you very much. Time is unfortunately running out, so many thanks everyone for joining and a special thanks to you, uh, Kalman. But please stay tuned for the next PTC Talks uh, already next week. So with that, I wish you uh, all a fantastic weekend. And uh, there is one, two more questions on the chat. Maybe, Kalman, if you have time to answer those, it would be great. Or if the person sure. who asked the question can take the contact details and reach out directly. Thank you, everybody. And thank you. Big thank you, Kalman. Thank bye you. Bye-bye.